welcome to Design Tab. My name is Montague Munro, and today we will be taking a look at some amazing things we can do with CSS to improve our workflow, as well as make writing CSS a more fun and enjoyable thing to do. This episode we will be focusing on preprocessors. Before we get started into the actual coding, I want to go over what CSS is and why preprocessors have become such a popular alternative. CSS is essentially a styling language that can be used to lay out and describe the styling of a markup document. Markup documents are typically HTML pages that you use to build your website. CSS is used to increase design flexibility, improve content accessibility, and provide a richer experience to the user accessing the page or document. So reading this, it's fairly easy to tell that CSS is an incredibly useful asset to have in any website. CSS, while great, has some well-known fallbacks. Uh, one, the syntax is awkward to write. Uh, all code needs to be put into one huge file and included in your website. And uh, some of the functionality is difficult to write and uh, could be simpler. However, in the recent past, new technology that utilizes CSS to its highest potential has become popular. I am talking about CSS preprocessors. So what is a CSS preprocessor? Well, think of it as another language that is more flexible, neater to read and write, and makes powerful functions that would be painful to write in CSS natively easy. This language then takes your code and turns it into CSS, which works on all of your websites. Great, right? I thought so. One of the most popular CSS preprocessors, and the one we will be covering in this tutorial, is SAS. SAS offers a wide range of great CSS extensions and functions, which we will be covering in just a moment. Installing SAS is relatively easy to do. If you are running Mac OS X or Linux, you should, have Ruby install you should have Ruby installed by default, and installing SAS will be a breeze. If you are running Windows, then you may need to install Ruby before setting up SAS. Now, once you have installed Ruby, um, you can easily install SAS by going into your terminal or command prompt and putting in the following command. So we'll do this now. First bring up your terminal, and then, let's just exit out of this quickly, there we go. then we want to go gem install sas, and this will install the sas gem onto your system and allow you to use sas. Once sas has been installed, you are able to create SAS files. These are commonly known as .scss files. These files take your SAS code and convert them into CSS. In order for the files to convert, you will need to tell SAS to watch the file, and whenever it is saved, then create or update a CSS file that belongs to it. So we'll go through that in a second, but let's take this opportunity to create our first SCSS file. Now, if we go into our terminal and just go city into your sites directory, um, wherever you host your websites, and we want to make a new directory called toot sass. Once that's done, we want to navigate into that directory. And then we want to create our first SAS file. Now, I'll just uh, open this up in my default text editor, and we will create our file. So, file, new file, and we will just put in something quick and random to start with. We'll say um, h1, this is just standard CSS, um, and we'll say color red. Now we'll save this 
and we want to save it as um, style dot scss inside of our sites shoot sass save it in there so now we have our scss file <coughs> now in order to create our css file which is what the website needs we need to use a command that sass supplies to watch the file and create our css file whenever it is saved so to do this, let's just go into our terminal and we are already inside the tootsass folder so what we type in is sass double dash watch this tells sass to watch a file and then we name the file we want to do which is style.scss then a double colon and now we specify what we want our CSS file to be called and we'll say style.css and we hit enter and it, you'll see it'll say um, you know um, for better performance rudder 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 this just means it's working um, there are a couple of uh, dependencies you can put in to make it run a little bit better <laughs> but um, you'll notice that if we go save and open it again you'll see it says overwrite style.css it detected that we had saved our SAS file and it went through and created our style.css um, right here and this is the one we can use inside of our websites and now you can see the power of this you can write all of your SAS in here whenever you save it it'll update our CSS file okay so now we know how to create our SAS files but we don't know how to write SAS and what SAS can do so let's get started on that right now if we go into our SAS file, you'll know that, for instance, if I had a div and an unordered list inside of that and list items inside of that, to write it in CSS, I would have to do something like this. Class, and then put the rules of the class in there. And then inside that I have to do class UL, and that would do the rules for the unordered list. And then again I'd have to say class ULLI or just class LI depending we'll say ULLI and then we'd have to do the rules for the list items in there and that can get quite tedious if you have a large file and um, there is much better ways that this could be done now <coughs> basically this is a lot to achieve such a common task and it can become painful when you have a huge CSS file that needs updating SAS gives us a much cleaner way of writing our nested styles you can style any nested element in SAS the following way. So we'll delete this and we'll start off with our container. And in here we write down all the rules for our container just like normal. Now let's say we wanted to target the UL in there. Well then we do this. We put in the rules for our UL. And then it list items not a problem and you can see this is a much more condensed tree uh, like way of doing our code we have class and inside class we have ul and inside ul we have li and this is just a much more structured way of completing what we need to do and this also makes it easier to find it when you're updating later on <laughs> alright so it, taking a good look at this code you can see how easy it is to navigate and it follows similar nesting styles to HTML. Class name contains a UL, and a UL contains LIs. Another amazing thing that SAS provides you is the option to split up your CSS sections into separate files for easy organization without losing efficiency. In CSS, it is possible to create your CSS, uh, to separate your CSS, but it requires extra load time for all the different CSS files you now need to load into your HTML document. In SAS, this is easy to do, um, and it will automatically compile all of your files into one CSS file, so it's a win-win situation. You get to split your logic, and you don't lose any loading time. Let's give this a shot. So we'll start by deleting our style.scss 
file. And with it, we'll also delete our style.css file. Whoops. <laughs> um, there we go, and delete. Blah. Yes. And then one more time. No, we'll leave him. Okay, now. The reason. Oh, yes. We just need to stop the SAS file looking, and now we can delete it. Sorry about that. One thing with um, SAS is that when you leave it watching the file, it won't let you delete the CSS file because it, it's, you know, keeping an eye on it for you. So you just stop that and then get rid of it. Now, what we're going to do is create a new folder. And we will name this folder SAS. Now, <coughs> inside here, we want to create another CSS, SCSS file called Typography. Um, so, let's go new file, remove this, and we will say in here we will only worry about typography. So we'll say H1, whoops, H1, color red, and then we'll say P, we'll say text align right okay so now we have our typographic rules we will save that as typography dot scss and save it now that we have this done we will go to our sas file folder and create a new file and name this style we'll save it quickly name it style.scss, just like the other one. Though instead of putting any rules in this one, we will take the rules from all of the other files we create and compile them together into this. So, let's say we wanted our typography rules. We will say at import, and then typography. And that's it, that's all it takes. That line will look inside the folder for a file called typography.scss and it'll include it. Now we'll save this and we have our typography installed as CSS. We'll then open up our command prompt. We'll say sass dash dash watch and we'll say um, sass slash style.scss and then double colon to style.css and then you'll see here it's gone in and looked at our style.scss it's gone in and imported the typography and then it's created a CSS file <coughs> so basically the beauty of this is that you can have a one file for typography, one file for the heading, one file for the footer. You can split your logic and make it easy to find in the future instead of the opposite which is uh, with CSS where you have one humongous file and the only way to really work anything out is by putting in a lot of comments and hoping for the best. This allows you to archive your code, split it up and then bring it all together. And because it compiles it all into one file and then turns it to CSS, you don't lose out on any um, loading time by compiling your various resources. And that's very handy. So <clears throat> in conclusion, if you have been using CSS for a while now and you're comfortable using it, then it is time you switched over to SAS and realized how great it is. After a few projects using SAS, I can guarantee you'll fall in love with it. If you are interested in learning more about SAS, there are many great tutorials and articles on the links below. Go check them out and realize that what I covered here today is only scratching the surface of what you can achieve with SAS. So thank you very much for viewing this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If you 
and want to learn more about web design, feel free to check out our website at designtab.me. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.